Okay, welcome uh, to this uh, FMG, Friends of Multilateralism Group uh, interview series, MSTELF and beyond. And my name is Shen Kun Lu, I'm the CEO of the FMG. And today we have the honor to have uh, Lisa Schroeter, the DAO's uh, uh, Global Director for Trade and Investment Policy. And uh, Lisa, welcome to Geneva and thanks for being here. And this is a critical moment for the WTO and for the systems that we are all committed to do. So I'm going to, to, to uh, throw out a few questions and then try to get a perspective from you, particularly uh, as a, a representative from a private sector, uh, how you look at the WTO, the challenges ahead and so on and so forth. So the first thing is about, of course, the ongoing MCTL from the Ministerial Conference. So coming here, what's your, as a private sector representative, what's your preoccupation or your priority for the deliverables of this uh, meeting and also even beyond? I oh, appreciate that. appreciate you having me for this too. I think we're always delighted for the opportunity to talk about how we can see progress and potentially be a part of real outcomes this week. Uh, I think in particular, having just come from the WTO building, you know, we're excited by the energy that is back in the process. The fact that we are talking about deliverables, but also having the opportunity to talk about real challenges in the system and ways we can look at the current operations, especially after everything we've gone through in the last two and a half years, maybe be more creative about how we go forward and where the WTO can make a real difference. You know, as the chair of the ICCA, the International Council of Chemical Associations, as the chair of our trade network, we put a paper into the WTO and a lot of our multilateralism friends uh, back in the fall to really highlight both sides of that coin. How can we reform the process, but do that design to really uh, look at a forward-looking agenda? Mm -hmm. I think particularly there's so many technical areas that we can focus on, and hopefully there will be good outcomes on long-standing issues like uh, health pandemic recovery like fisheries, but more importantly, how we can look at critical issues as we go forward, pave the way for trade environment and sustainability, for example. Mm -hmm. So we have to really look into both the short term and also long term into the future of the system that we hope that the minister right now negotiating among, th among themselves to deliver on those important issues, but also to, to, to uh, find a path forward for the future of the system that will be critical, uh, uh, of critical importance for all of us. The, the second question is that we all know, which is recognized globally, uh, that the WTO needs to be reformed and it has serious problem on all these functions, uh, negotiation, dispute, as well as uh, uh, transparency and surveillance. Uh, but we also know that some members uh, like EU has been put forward uh, a proposal to launch a process for WTO reform, but we still see challenges. So ideally it should be a process forward with all 164 members on it. But if not, uh, we have to find an alternative. But uh, what's your view on this? Do you think uh, uh, from a private uh, pr perspective that this is something we need to do now uh, one way or the other? Oh, very much so. And I think that's, that's part of the reason why we're here this week is to help contribute to that process too. I think especially as we look at as all the member countries have engaged in the WTO negotiations, and one of the value adds of being more transparent and more open to stakeholders is the ability for us to bring ideas to the table where we can really ground you know, these big high level discussions into very tangible outcomes. Uh, so for us, that can be things like regulatory cooperation. You know, the TBT, the Technical Barriers to Trade Committee, may not get a lot of attention, mm -hmm. but they're dealing with real tangible issues that, for a lot of companies, large and small, can affect our ability to participate in markets. Mm -hmm. And reinvigorating those commitments so countries are living up to their obligations to notify draft regulation, but to actually also have that opportunity to engage to ensure that draft regulation is fit for purpose and doesn't you know, create inadvertent trade barriers. Um, that's a really critical area. And somewhere as we think about the reform process going forward, you know, reinforcing those commitments, uh, reinvigorating the committee process, opening it up more to stakeholder engagement. You know, these are all, they sound like you know, very technical detailed areas, but they'd make a real difference. 
And that would allow for greater operations as we create more of that partnership. That's really how we could do the same when it comes to some of these forward-looking negotiations. You know, how do we provide the right technical expertise and science background to driving uh, new areas of opportunity, like the trade and sustainability mm -hmm. discussions? Yeah. So. What I understand from your, your, your intervention is that we need to have a kind of adaptive reform process where people could, uh, I mean, uh, not only governments, but also stakeholders like you and also like civil society could put ideas on it so as to have a structured discussion on all of this and also other things to, to move the system ahead. So. Absolutely, and I think it would reinforce, as we've said, you know, with getting so many members on the same page on every single initiative being so hard, that also creates a lot of momentum behind the plurilaterals, where like-minded countries and involved stakeholders could really drive uh, new creative ways of looking at these issues, helping them solve challenges that make it easier for everybody uh, to, to become part of that. Yeah, and also that's what we, our group of members always call is kind of open plurilateralism, mm -hmm. so as to that allow the like-minded members to move ahead first, but keep the door open for those who are not yet ready, but hopefully one day they could join and, and be part of that also. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the more we can share that information, again, especially where stakeholders can play a role, translating that into you know, real deliverables, real tangible outcomes. You know, it's, you can talk about an issue like regulatory cooperation, but when you've got examples of small companies becoming global exporters because they understand the regulatory process and they can participate in that, that's the kind of, that creates incentive for other governments who maybe haven't been as willing to get more interested and involved because you can genuinely see the outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, what you said is excellent and already answered part of my third question is <laughs> about uh, the role of the civil society. So be you like a private uh, sector representative, be us like a kind of NGO uh, that uh, other than this kind of stakeholders uh, being part of the process, putting ideas there, putting technical uh, uh, expertise as well as practical methodology there, is anything else uh, be it a kind of WTO mechanism or whatever that we as civil society could contribute more to this WTO reform process? and the future of the multilateral trading system? I definitely think so. And it's one of the reasons I'm so proud to have this role within our ICCA group, because so much of what we've developed so far, including last year's WTO reform paper, it really represented the diversity that I think all civil society can bring to this debate. In our case, very much geographic diversity. You know, uh, the ideas behind our paper came from Brazil and mm -hmm. South Africa and Saudi Arabia and Southeast Asia. To bring, when, especially when you think about global industries like the chemical industry that operate all around the world but have operations cutting across these geographies, when we can agree on what those common elements are in the level playing field that's going to make everybody more competitive, that creates a very positive dynamic for governments to engage, to want to be part of that process because in essence, we're, we're, we're almost bringing the ideas for growth to the table mm -hmm. in a way where everybody can contribute and turn that into really solid proposals um, that meet the needs of each country, but also look to, to advance that idea of trade facilitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably what we need to see the next step is that we already see a lot of interaction between ICC and WTO. Mm -hmm. uh, I think probably in the future with the support of the whole society that um, a lot of ideas like yours especially what you said is very important is not only from big developed companies, but also from developed countries who are also part of the process. I think that would be very kind of music to the ears of the many. So thanks a lot for that. So just to, 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 to conclude, uh, uh, would you like to share some thoughts about ms and beyond ms uh, the future of the multilateral trading system? Uh, and just a few words to uh, kind of message to pass to our audience and the, our group of community, which includes ambassadors, international organizations, private sector, and the civil society, so on and so forth. I appreciate that. I appreciate the opportunity because I do, we know there are a lot of challenges in the system. There's a lot of challenges in the world these days. We are going through, we have been going through some very tragic times. 
and there's never been a better opportunity for everybody to come together and it's not going to be easy certainly i give full credit to all of our governments working hard at coming to a ministerial declaration it's not going to be easy but the fact that everyone's here and committed to it and bringing new ideas and energy to this process is important so uh, as i do very often that, that's my call to action here i think the more that we get involved it's one thing to say you support the process it's another to actually contribute to how we make the process better. And that's where we can genuinely make a difference. The commitments are here. Now we need to turn that into a real action agenda, something everybody can be a part of. And that, that's the opportunity we have in front of us. And certainly that demonstrates the goals as you have in the Friends of Multilateralism, recognizing how we can uh, help the broader community understand the importance of the multilateral system. We need to translate the actions that go here into the benefits it brings to the world to create that energy behind doing more mm -hmm. and more we can be a part of. Yeah, no, thanks a lot. That's an excellent message, I think, which should be heard by our ministers uh, in the deputy rooms. I think the first message is that the multilateral trading system is still critically important and works for a lot of common people, uh, private sector, and civil society like us. But the other thing, as you said, that they need more actions and need to do better. I think that's what they they must do. And then, of course, we will be here to support them. Thanks a lot for being with us. I wish you a pleasant stay in Geneva. And we hope that we will expect some good results from the W rooms. We'll certainly work on it. Appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to our audience for being with us. Thank you.